Hey, this is Sean from Soundcraft, here with another installment of our UI series tutorials. Now we're on chapter 7, where we're going to cover subgroups, mu groups, and view groups. So before I show you how to set up and use subgroups, view groups, and mu groups, I figured we would just talk a bit about what they are and how they can help you mix. So first, a subgroup. A subgroup is basically a bus internally on the, on the console. What it allows you to do is it allows you to make little submixes of channels. So for instance, let's say I'm doing a band and I have the whole drum kit. So that's a kick drum, a snare drum, the toms, the overheads, uh, a ride mic, a hi-hat mic. Uh, I have all those channels and they're all individually, you know, they all have their own level, they all have their own EQ, compressor, so on and so forth. What I can do is I can make a drum subgroup where I send all those individual channels into a subgroup and then I get a whole processing channel on top of that. So here's why that, that could be really useful. Uh, I can use the subgroup to set my overall level for my drum kit. So let's say, you know, the, as the night goes on, the drummer just gets a bit louder, he's more into it. Or the reverse, where as the drummer, as it gets later, the drummer kind of fatigues and he, and he doesn't hit as hard as he does, uh, you know, early on in the, in the performance. So I can just bring down the whole kit level with one fader, which is quite nice. But on top of that, I also get a full processing channel. So the reason why that might be good is I might want to put a, a glue compressor, for instance, on all the drum channels. So that sounds like they're all kind of together in, in, in one kind of space. Uh, or I might want to put an overall EQ on the whole kick, you know, just to bring out the high frequencies or maybe take out some of the lows or take out some of the mids, so on and so forth. So it's very useful for that as well. Then we have mute groups. So mute groups are very handy because mute groups are a way of muting a bunch of channels with one button, with one press. So what I can do, again, take the example of a drum kit, I can set all those inputs as a mute group. So, you know, the drummer's going away, you know, that, that, that set is over, I can just hit a button, it mutes the whole kit. And then that's why you're done. Finally, we have view groups. Now these might be the most alien to some of you because they're kind of exclusive to digital consoles. So, um, in, you know, in analog world, you know, you have a physical mixer and th it's there. It, th it can't change. That's it. It's physically that. With a digital console, especially with the UI series where you have uh, a tablet or a computer or a, mo a phone that you're mixing on, you can change that screen to display what you want. That's what a view group is. So basically you can tailor what channels you're looking at uh, in, a, in a specific view group. So, Take my point uh, about my drum subgroup. So I already have a drum subgroup there. I don't maybe don't need the individual uh, drum channels. I just don't really need to see them uh, very often. But what I do need is I need my vocal mic. I need my drum subgroup. I need my guitar subgroup. And I need, let's say, all the effects returns. That could be one view group on, on the console. I set that. My screen shows those channels, and I can mix them. So now that we know what subgroups, mute groups, and view groups are, let's see how we can set up and use them. So now we're on the main fader page of the UI series covered previously in chapter three. Elliot briefly mentioned the slide out when I press the UI here, and this is gonna be our main mode of operation. So again, if you just press the UI button here, the slide out will come out, or what I can do is in settings, I can come down and go to pin slide out and mix mode, when I exit, it'll be stay there and it'll always be there whenever you're on the main fader page. So for now, I'm gonna leave that enabled so this way we don't have to keep pressing it. So as Elliot explained in chapter three, the first three tabs on the slide out are a quick way to navigate to your inputs, your effects returns, and your subgroups and your aux masters. The next two tabs uh, are view groups and mute groups and these are also linked to the numbered tabs. And these work together, I'll show you how they do that. Um, so now let's set up all our groups. So as I talked about earlier, you have subgroups, you have mute groups, and you have view groups. Now I'm gonna start on subgroups. So if you see the subgroups tab here, there's a little kind of thing in the corner there. It also has on mute groups and view groups. So what that means is that button can has an extra function. If I just press subgroups, it'll show me my subgroup masters, which is handy. You know, if I wanna go right to my subgroups, cool, here, here's, my, here's my master fader for that subgroup. Handy thing. But again, if I press and hold subgroups, it gives me the setup. So here's the page. So here are the controls on there. So you have a reset button, which obviously resets all the subgroup assignment. Here you have the subgroup fader assign number. So you have one, two, three, four, obviously subgroup one, that would set up that. So if I do channel one, channel two, and subgroup one, and subgroup two, I might want channel three, channel four. 
In subgroup three, I might want five, six, seven, eight. And then four, we might want the players and the line inputs. Cool. So now I'm all assigned. So if I come out into the mix page, go to my subgroups. Now, another way I could do it is I could press and hold here. And then here it says unassigned subgroup one, but if I, I just unassigned it. So now it'll say assigned to the subgroup. So I can also assign it this way. So here you go, back on one. So there's two separate ways to assign the subgroups, uh, either by the by pressing and holding there or in the subgroup assignment here. When I do this, press and hold. Now, the other way, and you'll see the L2 tab come up here. This is also how you can do mute groups and view groups. So if you're already in one of the assignments, you can also just navigate using the L2 tab. But let me show you how to do it if you come out. So if I just want to do the view groups now, I press and hold here. Same thing. So I have six view groups here that I can assign. So again, view groups are a good way of, of, of setting up your custom views, kind of like fader layers on an, an SI or a VI console. It, it's a good way of setting up custom views of, of specific channels. So let's say I want my view group one to be again, channel one and two. View group two can be channel three and four. View group three can be four, five, six, seven, eight. Or I'm sorry, five, six, seven, eight. And so forth. Now, my mute groups, for instance, I can do the same thing. So uh, my mute group one, I want to say, maybe I want to do all the channels or all the regular inputs, rather. I can do that. And then let's say mute group two, I want to do the line inputs and the player. All right, cool. So now we're all set up. So if we, if I press view groups, uh, you'll see nothing happens because these work in conjunction with the numbered buttons. So if I press, if, if the view groups there is lit, that means that you're on the view group selection. So if I press one, it'll now show me my first view group. If I press two, it'll show me my second view group, three, my third, and so on. Now, what if I want to look at my view, my mute groups? I just press mute groups, press one, ah, and now you'll see, first of all, mute group one on came on, and you'll also see that the button went red. This means that mute group one is now enabled. So again, you'll see that here, mute, 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 mute. Why is it muted? Because the mute group is active. Now I can unmute a channel. That's part of mute group if I want, or I can just turn it off that way. So that's how that section works. The numbered buttons here work with the view groups and the mute groups. On subgroups, if you, you also get uh, processing on that subgroup as well. So if I select a group, and I hit edit, this will be an EQ, a compressor and effect sends for that entire subgroup. So let's say I made a drum subgroup, you know, kick, snare, toms, overheads, all that kind of stuff. And I want to EQ them uh, together. I can do that, you know, something subtle, not, nothing too crazy. I want to do, you know, nice gentle strokes, maybe just a nice high frequency boost with a compressor. I might want to just do very slight, gentle compression, nothing too heavy, nice long release, nice long attack because we don't want to make it pump or sound weird. We just want to kind of glue the bits together. But you can do that with a subgroup. You get an extra processing layer when you create subgroups, which is very handy. It's a good way to get instruments to play together that you know might sound disjointed in the mix. A uh, good example, like I said, is a drum kit. You can do that with guitars as well. Let's say you have a band that has like three guitar players. Um, you can kind of put them all in one subgroup and then compress and EQ them together, which would help make them sound more cohesive. So that's how you assign and use groups. Uh, check back for more videos ahead. And until then, happy mixing.